Hello there, my name is Martin Henley. This is the Effective Marketing YouTube channel. And if you've spent a second here, you will know that I am on a mission with this channel to give you everything you need to be successful in your business. Now, as far as I know, the only way for you to be successful in your business is to be more effective with your sales and marketing. So not only am I giving you everything I know about sales and marketing, I am pulling in anyone who can bear to talk to me to extract their experience of sales and marketing with the view to making you more successful in your business. So today's guest was having a very promising career in IT, rising to the ranks of project and program manager before starting his business, Initiative 2, which has been turning websites into businesses now for 20 years. He has no less than six Google ad certifications and is a member of Mensa. He always wears a tie and tells me that no one would take him seriously if he were to dress casually, which has me thinking, how does this guy dress casually? Uh, today's guest is Kenneth McKay. Hello, Kenneth. That's not the best look. That's a better look. Oh, you've gone down a little bit. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, Good afternoon. Very well, Martin. Yourself? I am also very well, man. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend this time with me today. I'm expecting to have You're very with, welcome. Yeah, I'm expecting to have with the Mensa membership and the 17 years in IT. I'm expecting to have quite a scientific chat today about Google Ads. Is is that the way you do Google Ads? It's the the devil's in the detail, and the details the boring stuff. And the boring stuff is where the money is. Uh, and that's where I just apply that logic uh, and it works. There are other aspects of online marketing where it's very much more visual, creative, and uh, that's not our bag, uh, each to their own. But when it comes to the analysis, the, 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 the strategy, the planning, get into grips with every change that Google makes for right or wrong. Uh, that's uh, our comfort zone. That's where we do very well. That's why clients engage us. Okay, cool. I've got a theory. I've got a theory about everything and I've got an issue with everything. That's what you will learn about me, Kenneth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my theory is that Google ads now, I, we don't know what, I, I see that you've got cert certifications in all of them. Mm -hmm. And I've had my eyes open to some of the ad um, offering from Google recently. So I'm thinking differently about that. Um, but Google PPC, the search engine, um, the SERPs page advertising, I think that is perfect marketing, perfect advertising except for the fact that you have to buy it from Google. That's my theory. Okay, is it the fact you have to buy it or the fact you have to buy it from Google? Is it a, you have an issue with Google or the issue with paying for the advert? I have an issue with, I have an issue with corporations. So it's, it's paying Google. You mm -hmm. see, I think it's perfect in that it's a formula like you pay so much for a click, you achieve so many clicks to get an inquiry, you achieve so many inquiries to get a sale. So I'm very interested in like costs of customer acquisition. So given that it's this formula, it's very formulaic, and given that the targeting is ridiculous because the, the audience target themselves, they have an interest in this thing because they're searching for it. The timing is perfect because they're searching for this thing right now. Um, it's all perfect apart from it's, it's this huge monolithic corporation called Google who take billions and billions of dollars of, of everyone's marketing budgets every year. I don't know. It's, so it's the way, like you say, they make changes for good or bad. It's kind of the way mm -hmm. that they behave that I find it's prevents it from being perfect. I'm not saying that they're bad people, um, but I'm saying it, it's that that prevents it from being perfect. Yes, I mean, I can understand that point of view. And I have to admit, I'm pretty agnostic 
uh, I see Google Ads or LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, whatever next month's must-have online marketing technique or platform is, I just find that I view those as a means to an end, not an end in themselves. Uh, I would not want a client or a potential client to come to me and say, I, I just want to you use you to do Google Ads. What I want to know is what do you want Google Ads to achieve for you? Uh, and there's nothing in life that's completely free. There is no free lunch. Uh, and if Google have to make a bit of money on the side, and I had a conversation with somebody earlier today about the billions that Google make, well, fair dues to them. Because if they didn't facilitate it, then we would not have that opportunity. And I'm glad you mentioned in your preamble to this, that it's cost of acquisition. The actual cost of a click and metrics like that, I'm not saying they are irrelevant, but you've got to keep an eye on the final outcome. And one of the reasons why people spend so much on Google Ads and, and other paid platforms is sometimes it's because of their own ineptitude. If you do it badly, it will cost you more. That's a given. But the other fact is that so many of your competitors are also giving it a go. And all of us are doing it with selfish intent. We are all doing it looking to turn 10 dollars or pounds or euros or, or yen or whatever into multiples of that. So it is a very much, a, uh, I mean, you didn't mention it in the, the intro, but uh, I'm an economist by training. So everything comes down to, uh, you know, cash values eventually. Uh, you can uh, quantify things that way. And um, so I can understand the, the, the sort of the ethical, for want of a better term, argument you have, but I think it's a, uh, if it if Google wasn't doing what it was doing and it wasn't working so well for those who were uh, using it properly, then it would probably just wither and die. Uh, but it seems to be producing results. Ergo, it continues. And tongue in cheek, many people complain about the changes. But very often they are done with good intent. There are some changes on the go at the moment and coming up in the next few months that I'm not thrilled about. I don't believe that certainly for our clients and that the way that we use Google Ads, it will be advantageous, but we are where we are. And uh, we just have to keep a close eye on things and make sure that it still delivers that substantial positive return on investment. Okay, 100%. So I think I'm in the luxurious position. I don't run, I don't run ad campaigns anymore. And I have done mm -hmm. historically. And, you know, I've suffered that agony of i don't know if this still goes on of google essentially emptying our accounts and not delivering a great deal of of um, value necessarily and having to pick up the phone and, and have that conversation with a client you know that has happened not consistently but that has happened to me in my life um i think i'm in the luxurious position of i don't run campaigns anymore i teach ppc i'm a lecturer with the digital marketing institute and one of the modules is about ppc and the point I always want to make is that Google is in this for your money and Google is very good at taking your money is kind of what the, the message that I want to get across. Yeah. So I think it's 100% you're, you're correct. I think there's it's ineptitude on the part of advertisers. And what's the word? You know, this insane money generating machine that is google i don't know if i'm just too moral for for marketing anymore 
No, it's... Uh, I'm Scottish and we have a reputation of being careful with money. You definitely uh, do. And uh, I like to apply that not only to my own money, but to the money of my clients. Uh, if things are generating a good return for them, I'm quite happy for them to spend money like it's going out of fashion. If it's generating the volume of business that's profitable that they can cope with. If it's not working, we would put the brakes on it. We would stop things. And to be honest, when we are first approached by a client, we will and do turn away potential clients if we are not confident that we can generate a, a, a worthwhile positive return for them. Uh, but touching on the point you made about advising your students about the fact that Google is a business, Google is there to make money. One thing that I urge people to be very wary of when they use Google ads is that Google is very helpful in either within your Google ads account it can very often show recommendations and there can be many many different types of recommendations that Google suggests will make your account possibly better. Somewhat cynically they normally distill down to spend more money. Uh, it doesn't matter how you get there but that's the end result and to be honest uh, we seldom take uh, apply the, 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 the suggestions from Google uh, because we don't think that they are going to be advantageous to our clients. So that's something to be very wary of. And associated with that, it's not uncommon for a Google representative to contact people who are existing Google Ads uh, uh, account holders and to give them advice. And I'm sure the advice is very well intentioned. And I'm sure from a technical checkbox mentality, it's ticking the, the, the right boxes. But in my experience, and I'm not saying I'm right, I'm just seldom wrong, uh, that very often the, the uh, suggestions are cookie cutter, and they are basically a person telling you the same sort of things that, the, that, that appear automatically within your Google Ads account. And it normally comes down to spend more money, increase your budget, increase your cost per click, da, 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 which may work, but it's a very, it can be a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Yes, I mean, the, um advertising is is the only thing you can really call google about you know there, there's someone picking mm. up the phones to talk to people people about advertising and like you say someone told me it had changed recently somebody who's spending quite a lot of money said they had a very useful account manager who was more nuanced in their approach but the only advice i've ever been given is like you say increase your budget increase your um your cost per click increase the number of keywords, increase the number of campaigns, increase the amount of time you run the ads. You know, so what I tell students is actually being effective with Google Ads is about putting in the hard yards. It's about mm -hmm. making sure that you've done the work to make sure that you get the, the return that you need. Um, like th there's always huge scope for greater efficiency in in ad campaigns i've never looked at an ad campaign and haven't been able to make like significant suggestions and you know i've worked on campaigns where we've halved the spend and doubled the return it's not mm -hmm. i don't know where it sits now um but yeah it's me i've got issues with the world that's the problem kenneth i'm um no it's good to be cynical yes uh, and Touching on the point you made earlier about me being sort of analytical, uh, without the getting into the statistics and the, the hard sums of it, uh, the maths of it, uh, much of what is said about Google Ads 
and what is suggested as being a good strategy and good techniques is probably much more relevant if you have a big account with a very large budget. But I would suggest that the vast majority of people who use Google Ads, they are talking about small hundreds of whatever currency it is per month, uh, not hundreds of thousands. And it goes without saying that the more ammunition you have bring along to the fight, the more effective you are going to be. Uh, and very often people try and apply subtle nuanced tweaks when they can only afford a handful of clicks per day. So it, it, there, there's no scope to really make a difference. And you can end up rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. You can be changing the color of the deck chairs on the Titanic. But what you should really be doing is trying to avoid the iceberg. Uh... Yeah, I think 100%. And I think, what do I think? The thing is this, so on one side, we've got a very adept money-making machine, global money-making machine. On the other hand, you've got this ineptitude. Like people don't, I don't know if people don't invest the time and energy to know how to do this properly. And it makes it messy. And it makes it more difficult maybe for people like yourself and maybe my students who have a sense of how to do this pos uh, properly because, you know, it's bidding systems. So you are bidding against people who aren't sensible or aren't doing this sensibly, you know? It's, it's very true to this extent that these days we don't actively target people who are simply contemplating Google Ads. We can certainly help them, but if they are speaking to somebody who is less experienced, less skilled, less world weary aware, less ethical, the chances are they're going to be told a much happier, cheerier, sexier story than I would give them. You know, again, Scottish, it's very sort of, uh, we are on the side of pessimism and then try and build up from there. Um, <laughs> And to the extent that these days, most of our clients, not all of them, but most of our clients come to us having had a bad experience elsewhere. They, they've been using Google Ads. They believe it should work for them. It just hasn't. And it could have been done in-house. It could have been outsourced. But they, they, whatever the reason for it not working, they believe it ought to work. And through referrals and recommendations, they, 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 they come to, you know, the bald specky guy and I just tell it to them as it is. And the initial conversation, uh, the outcome will range anywhere from you should never have used Google Ads in the first place. Stop immediately and we will not take you on as a client. It's just not the right thing for you. Right through we've had a look and actually you're doing as well as can be expected given the circumstances. Right through to this has been done, done very badly. Uh, there's lots of the proverbial low hanging fruit. There's lots of potential there. And if you simply make some changes, it can really be transformational. Uh, so we've had a many instances where we've had people who have been very upset but they still believe it should work they've been and got in touch we've talked it through with them on a commercial basis you know what's in it for them what is it that they want to achieve commercially and we can then try and match up to see how that would fit in with what's possible using google ads and when you hit that sweet spot it can transform a uh, uh, sort of a career ending situation for them right through to something that can be, you know, be the making of the business. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think it used to be more like that. Like you started around 2002. I mean, I haven't asked you the first question yet, so we need to be careful <laughs> about what we're saying. <laughs> but I remember I started my business 2005. We were, I was consulting people on canvassing. If you, I was a salesperson, 
before we became a telemarketing company, we incorporated email. So maybe it was around 2007, 2008 that I started playing with, um, with PPC. And at that point, it was like a tap. <laughs> like you literally turn mm -hmm. it on, you take as many leads as you could possibly cope with, and you turn it off for a bit while you, while you sort it out. So I, I don't get a sense that it's like that anymore. Uh, those were happy days. Those were happy, uh, you know, happy the, days, the, man. The, the, the analogy of the tap is, is, it's not just you saying that. Uh, anecdotally, it's, it's, uh, it's the common thread. And there are still people who, in their marketing, they still refer back to what they were doing back then. And uh, because the, 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 the stats they can quote are phenomenal and people buy into that. But having said that, I've come across people who had built very, very, very successful businesses using Google Ads back in the olden days when things were simple, when you could get clicks for a penny, when there was no competition, there was pretty limited rules and regulations as to what you could or what you couldn't do. It was like the Wild West. Uh, and I know people who did extremely well, built very successful businesses back then. And then as Google got its act together and things tightened up, as pay-per-click became much more competitive, as many more businesses gave it a go, suddenly they couldn't succeed anymore uh, because they hadn't been doing anything particularly smart. They'd just been the, at the head of the queue. They were the first there and um it's it's brutal now um the idea of a, of a of a one pence one cent click is is pretty few and far between these days many 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 more businesses are trying google ads which even if they're not doing it well from a technical perspective does make it very competitive just from sheer congestion because google it's a it's a dynamic auction so that the more mon people that are willing to spend money for any particular set of keywords at any particular moment in time the more expensive it will be and uh, we very often see businesses where between eight and nine in the morning a competitor appears and then they've blown their budget for the day between nine and ten another competitor appears they blow their budget for the day so on and so forth and because of that it can be more difficult to get traction so nobody really makes much headway uh, so it's you've got to be more focused much more focused these days to try and get value for money and to just get that traction on the, the, the words and phrases that are most likely to turn into business for you. Yeah, 100%. And this is what I think. I mean, maybe we should get back onto the format because the <laughs> format works. <laughs> and, and hopefully <laughs> I, can, um, I can weave in some of my issues on the way. Okay, so as you know, there's only five questions. So the five questions are, how are you qualified to talk to us about um, Google Ads? And maybe more specifically, what, what flavor of Google Ads is it that you are running with? Mm -hmm. um, who do you work with? How do you add value to their lives? Um, what is your recommendation for people who want to do better with their Google advertising? Um, what do you recommend people read? And who can you throw under the bus who might endure or maybe even enjoy to have a conversation like this with me. So question number one, how are you qualified, Kenneth McKay, to talk to us about Google Ads? Okay, now at this point, you would expect me to tell you I'm wonderful, the best, you should be, you'd be daft not to use me. And that's what I would imagine anybody and everybody in this situation would say. I want to be a wee bit different and I think it'd be more beneficial to your listeners if they're still with us at this stage uh, is to take a step back and ask them what sort of criteria would you think 
is important if you are looking to engage somebody to do Google Ads. And typical criteria include, uh, you know, how long has somebody been using Google Ads? You know, earlier you mentioned, you know, back in the mid 2000s, you know, Google Ads in some shape or form has been around for a while. So there's a school of thought that if you've been doing it from the start, you'll know you'll be better than somebody who started yesterday. Not necessarily so. Two reasons for that. Firstly, if somebody hasn't really improved their game, never was very good, then they're as bad today as they were 10 years ago. Second thing related to that is that Google Ads itself has changed so much that just because you did it very well 15 years ago doesn't mean that you're up to snuff now. So, so that's something for somebody to consider. Second thing is qualifications. And, and I know you offer, you know, uh, you know online marketing uh, uh, training. And so you will be with me here in that there isn't much in the way of meaningful Google Ads qualifications. You know, Google itself um, has tests that you can sit. You know, I, I've sat them uh, just because I thought we're better. Uh, but again, I'm not convinced that they completely address the the useful application of Google Ads. It's it concentrates more on the technical aspects, you know, which buttons to push, which boxes to tick. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, uh, a good way of getting business is through referrals and recommendation. But a challenge there is very often people refer and recommend people before they've actually discovered themselves that the people they're referring and rec recommending weren't actually that good. So I've got three negatives there, or, or three <laughs> realisms. One is just because somebody's been doing it a while, as I have, doesn't mean they're any good. Uh, the qualifications, running a few multiple choice tests so that you can cheat on if you wish, so what? Uh, and personal recommendations are a strange one. I mean, we get quite a few referrals and recommendations from people who actually turned us down. They went elsewhere. And they then refer us to other people and the conversation goes, we spoke to them, spoke to other people who seemed much more uplifting, had a much better sales pitch, and it didn't work out well. So go and speak to the, the bald, specky guy. Uh, so, that, so that's our thing. Consistency, results, and by results, we mean actual money in the bank for our clients. You know, positive returns on their investment. And I stress the word positive. You know, any idiot can spend your money and bankrupt you. You know, that's that's a that's a massive uh, effect, but it's not one that you want. So you've got to be very careful when you are speaking to somebody about Google Ads, or or frankly, most if not all online marketing. And um, but I like to think that we can have a good commercial conversation with with business owners and the business decision makers we can talk about the things that are relevant to them as opposed to the shiny new objects that we may be able to offer so that i think is a, a that goes with a shirt and tie uh, it's the it's the professional nuanced analysis of what's possible relative to what their commercial aspirations are and as you mentioned we've been doing this a long time and uh, you know people don't say bad things about us you know it's it, it's um, it's uh, we've, we've been consistent across across the almost two decades now which is a scary thought but uh, 
so th so that's um that's why i think i'm qualified we can take the science we can take the mathematics we can take the statistics we can take the technology and we can apply it in a way that works for the client okay cool i think you're right who did i speak to tony morris i don't know if you know tony morris um he's a sales <laughs> trainer and he says mm -hmm. It's experience is nothing. It's all about success, you know, which is kind mm. of interesting because you can do something really badly for 20 years really easily in today's society. You know, you, you absolutely yeah. can. Um, the thing about qualifications is I'm not a huge, you know, I, I am a lecturer with the Digital Marketing Institute. I think they do the best job of providing a digital marketing qualification. But what I tell my students is teaching digital marketing is a little bit like teaching people to surf. You know, I can't actually do that. I can teach you how to be safe in the water. I can give you a taster. I can hopefully give you the enthusiasm to want to do it every day. You know, but essentially it is such a dynamic environment that anything that I tell you today, especially if I focus on the technical, um, could change in a second tomorrow, you know. So I think you're right about that. The referrals is interesting. If I wanted to ask you a challenging question, which I do like to do, I would say, why don't you just win your customers through PPC advertising, through Google Ads? Why don't we advertise for Google yes. Ads customers? I didn't, say don't uh, I didn't say you didn't advertise. I don't know if you do, but it doesn't sound like you do. Uh, we... I think the expression is we do eat our own dog food. Uh, we do experiment with Google Ads. Uh, and although I'm sure it would be very amusing to use a client's uh, budget to our own nefarious deeds, we don't. We, we play around with ourselves. But the brutal reality is that the size and nature of agency that we are, we do not need nor want massive numbers of inbound inquiries. Uh, so for Google Ads to work for a Google Ads agency, you have to be working at a, a high volume. It, it's just not a, it's not the right tool for us. And we apply the same methodology to ourselves as we do for our clients. And as I mentioned earlier, the the first stage of a conversation with a potential client is trying to assess whether Google Ads is indeed a, a, a worthwhile option for consideration by them. And a main criteria there is, are enough people searching with buying intent for what it is that you sell? And when it comes to Google Ads, uh, it would be a uh, there would be a lot of wastage there. Anything to do with coaching, training, marketing, there's a lot of people looking for free information, people just looking, you know, tire kickers. So uh, it's um, anybody in this sector who's contemplating using Google Ads, you've got to go into it with your eyes open. It's not, it doesn't fit with our business model. Therefore, we do not use it for ourselves for that. We've used it for other things, but not for our core business. Okay, so it's interesting. So after the TAPS period, there was a period of time, mm -hmm. so I don't know when this was, maybe 2011. I stopped running campaigns around 2014. Now, during that time, there was a laissez-faire i don't know what you're the economist not me but there was like a <laughs> mark like the balance the, the market was taking care of itself in most markets you it was financially viable to invest if you invest cleverly like nobody was throwing stupid money at the, the price of a click for example except marketing so mm -hmm. the last time I looked, like any kind of useful, like you say, with intent keyword in marketing would cost you maybe 15 pounds. And mm -hmm. if you did it very efficiently, 
then maybe you could convert one of those 100 clicks into a customer, in which case that customer has cost you 1,500 pounds, mm -hmm. which was never viable with my model. I think what was happening is a lot of people were selling courses which were hugely inflated to cover their cost of, of acquisition. Yes. So it seems like marketing was the first market in PPC to lose its head and and not be viable for, for a lot of people. I think what happened, it's the old, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yes. And lots of people in marketing, and that covers a multitude of sins. You know, web designers, uh, PR people, IT people, people with marketing qualifications and everything in between. Uh, they have become aware of Google Ads. As we were talking about earlier, uh, it had been a great success for many people. It was just you, you just, like a slot machine that always paid out. You, 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 you put your budget in and you got multiples back and you didn't need to do anything. It was, you didn't need to know anything. It was great. Lots of people bought into that concept and it became very much sort of almost like trench warfare in World War One, where they just they got stuck and they just kept throwing more money and more money and more money. And some people were successful, but only if they were able to support ramping up the budget and then they could cope with the business it generated. But there was a lot of attrition. And, uh, you know, that's why for both ourselves, but more importantly for our clients, that's why we always assess the potential commercial viability of Google Ads or, you know, we could apply the same approach to any other online marketing activity. Uh, you know, if you put 100 in, do you get 100 plus back? Uh, if uh, your, main, uh, the, the, your main potential customers uh, are a certain demographic, is TikTok the right place for them? Possibly not, possibly yes. Is Facebook, is LinkedIn, is YouTube, is Google Ads, is this, is that? Uh, it's not a, a one size fits all. And I think that's a, a mistake that a lot of people make with Google Ads. They just do it very often because they've been given a, a voucher from Google, you know, for a small amount that they think, oh, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll sign up and I'll get my 70 pounds or my hundred dollars or whatever, which uh, in my opinion, those introductory bonuses are the worst reason possible for beginning Google Ads. Yeah, I mean, I'm 100% with you. So the thing is, it should work for, like I, I'm, I understand what you're saying. It's not a cookie cutter thing, but of all of the digital marketing options, PPC, um, Google Ads should be applicable across most situations. Is what I would say. Like it because it, it's self-targeting and it's self-timing. And we even get to know what the keywords are in advance, you know, mm -hmm. so it should have the widest application. That's what I want to say. It should be the thing that every business could benefit from, except like you're saying, it's not always viable. So why isn't it always viable? Okay. I mean, should is a fantastic word. I've always found that, you know, this should work, you know, uh, you should have done that, should's a great word. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we had a client and I'll call them geologists. They weren't geologists, but we don't have long enough to try and explain what the heck they did, but it was underneath the ground. Right. And they had developed a piece of software that allowed them to guess what was down there and it was you know bleeding edge stuff and it was you know you know big bucks were involved if you could find the right whatever they were looking for 
And they were very keen on using Google Ads uh, to promote that. I was very reticent, but they were adamant that they wanted to give it a go. And they had the budget that they could give it a go. So we gave it a, a very good shot. And to start with, they were thrilled to bits. They were getting lots of impressions. Lots of people were seeing their advert. They were even getting lots of clicks. But in terms of people getting in touch, they were few and far between. And those who did get in touch were just not the right people at all. And it turned out that what they were promoting was so cutting edge that the only people who really knew about it were students, university students at an advanced stage who were looking for it on Google for research purposes. They were not in the market to buy. They might be in ten, five, ten years time, but not at the moment. So there weren't enough people search it with buying intent to make it worthwhile. So although Google Ads worked, it attracted the, the, the right, you know, people who had an interest in those keywords. Uh, it wasn't cost effective because none of those people were in the market to spend however, you know, six figure sums on this piece of software. Does that make sense? It makes 100% perfect sense to me. So I'm kind of framing, forgive me, because I'm a generalist. No, no. <laughs> I like to do it. So I'm kind of framing a criteria, because what strikes me about your presence is, because I've been looking at you today, obviously, with a view to speaking to you, is that you're almost better than I am at repelling clients, because I'm not interested in having clients anymore. But you're always, you're like in all of your marketing messages, it seems to be the first question is the right question, but the way you frame it is wrong. So the, the question would be, should yeah. be, is this going to be viable for you? And that is the question. Is It's about viability. And I think there's a criteria to that. But you don't frame it as that. You frame it as this probably isn't going to be viable for you. So what I don't know, because I don't know you very well, is if that's just a very clever reverse psychology to pull them in, to get them pushing a little bit harder. Or if you actually, I mean, it feels like when I speak to you, it feels like you're comfortable in your own skin. You're doing what you need to do. You don't have to take a risk by taking on a client where it's not going to be successful in the way they need it to be. So I suspect it's not a clever pushing people away reverse psychology thing. But it seems to me there's a criteria like, you, in the first instance, there needs to be search volume. And then, like you're specifying, there has to be search volume with intent. Like, can you attract people who are actually looking to buy this thing? The second thing needs to be about the cost per click, like what the market supposedly is deeming is the right cost per, per, per click, and whether you can acquire enough clicks to get you a customer within your budget for acquiring a customer so that's the second thing what's the third thing ah the third thing is that some industries are just closed shops they are not open any longer and i'm thinking not about hospitality i'm thinking specifically about the hotel business so booking.com mm -hmm. TripAdvisor, those people have done deals that guarantee that they are always going to rank first second third fourth for those clicks and if you want to outbid them a friend of mine tried it once, and I think he was paying over £150 per click um, for a hotel room in London and still hadn't been able to depose Booking.com. So, you know, that that is kind of sewn up. So it seems to me like there's those three criteria. Like, is this still open season for your industry? Is it actually viable if the market, are the market playing nicely? And are the, is it, are the cost per clicks actually a, a, a nice position? And then the first one that I said was... Are there actually people searching for the thing that you're selling? Yeah. Is that it's it? Not, no. That's probably the, the the main requirements. You know, if people are not searching, you know, for example, you could have a, a the best Google Ads campaign ever selling VHS video recorders. 
the chances are that in 1984 a lot of, in 1984 the chances are that aren't going i mean i might be wrong but i don't think there's going to be a vast volume of searches for that so that's one thing second thing you mentioned you know the cost per click and that i always say it's important up to a point but um it comes down to the actual cost per acquisition, which will average out over over the piece. I mean, we had a, a client and um, on the same day, they got two clicks for very similar terms, both of which resulted in business for the client. One of those clicks was just shy of 170 Pound sterling. So what? What's that? Two fifty dollars US. You know, yep. it, it was a it was a, a decent amount of cash for a click. Now, as it happened, it converted. Everybody was happy. But perversely, and despite what I said earlier, that same day they also got a click for one pence. Haven't seen that for a long time. That also converted. So they both got they got two very good bits of business same day, one pence, hundred and seventy pounds. You know the difference in the cost per click was mind blowing. Uh, it was just because of the phase of the moon and the the wind and the seas that there was reasons why there was that difference, but in both cases, it was brilliant business for the client, but we had leeway that we weren't restricted to, for example, £10 per click or £5 or £50 or, you know, we had a degree of, of leverage and it averaged out over the piece. So I try and not get fixated on the cost per click. That can be a, a that can sometimes stop you performing well, because in Google Ads, if you appear lower down the, the list of adverts the chances are you will be paying less for your click but the chances are fewer people will see those adverts and click on them so it's it may be a false economy uh, and the third thing you mentioned was concerning the uh, had a senior moment. Um, That's okay. It was about the closed shop. Um... The closed shop, yes. And and what you raised there is a, a major, major consideration. If you are in an industry where there are these aggregator sites, you know, the sites like booking.com that bring together stuff, uh, and there are lots of similar sites for different verticals, different industries, different sectors, if you're up against them, that can be challenging uh, for no other reason than if you're spending tens of pounds or dollars, they're spending tens of thousands of pounds or dollars. And it, it's a bit of an uneven fight. And because they've been doing it for a longer while and they've been doing it successfully and they've got a bigger budget, uh, they have a very strong entrenched position. Uh, to the extent that when we speak to a potential client who is in that situation, we have to take a very considered view as to whether it's worth pursuing it. Certainly in a head-on, head-to-head type fight, what we often find is there may be ways to uh, get around it. I mean, we, we, strangely enough, during lockdown, we did some work with, uh, you know, people who offered accommodation and, and we found ways to, uh, to get them a slice of the action despite their very limited resources. Um, and there are niches within niches. You know, we did work for a client who they rented I'll call it a castle, for want of a better term. It was a, a, a period historic property. Uh, and there they could have gone down the, the, the booking.com route, but it's 
there they just got lost in amongst everything else. So Google Ads for them got them very specific, very targeted uh, traffic. Because as you've referred to on many occasions through this conversation, the major advantage of Google Ads is that somebody has effectively put their hand up and said, I am interested in whatever it is you happen to be selling. And um, you can't ask for, for better than that. It's like being in a shop and somebody coming in and saying, I want to buy a whatever it is you sell. So that's why it's so valuable. That's why it's so competitive. And that's why so many people try it, uh, but struggle to, to, to deliver. Yeah. And I think those aggregates, those businesses are kind of rapacious, you know, where they will outbid you for your company name, the name of your resort. So you do your marketing, people search for you, they find booking.com or TripAdvisor at the top, and then you pay 20% to those aggregators for the yeah. privilege of, of, of them taking the booking yes. for you. You know, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's uh, the, the, the frustration that we get whenever we're approached by people who have uh, accommodation, be it for leisure or business. The fact that how much they have to pay uh, the aggregator sites to the extent that they almost feel as though they are being strong armed. It's, uh, you know, extortion, you know, words like that are used and it's, and it's all above board, it's all legal, it's all fair and dandy. And it may just be that paying an aggregator site 15% of the booking is the cost of doing business. Uh, it could be that if you don't have enough budget to fight them on a, on a level playing field, then you just have to accept that that is the cost of doing business. Uh, and it may be that you have to look at alternatives. But, but having said that, we have had instances where we have managed to help people in the accommodation sector uh, by being very precise, very niched or niched. Um, it, it can work, but it's, we would evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. So I would say those are the three, I think, big criteria, um, obvious criteria. And then you have to watch Google like a hawk because Google tells porky pies. It absolutely does. Um, so it inflates the size of the audience on the way in when you're in the Google keyword planner. It inflates the suggested bid. So I always found it was 20 or 30% higher than it needed to be to get you into first position, which is where I always thought you needed to be. And then they took away the ranking. So they stopped telling you where on average your, your ad was actually ranking. And that's what you're buying. Do you know what I mean? And they took that one thing away. So Google is, and then if you call them, their advice is always spend more money, you know? So yes. Google is, so you've got to balance this rapacious, um, corporation with the ineptitude, people not investing the right amount of time and energy and money to understand how it works. And then there's you and I swimming in the middle. Like we get squished, man. Yes, I mean, it's interesting that you flag up the, you know, first of all, the, the keyword planner. And yes, it's certainly, uh, this is the, you know, for the benefit of MD listening, it's where you can go in and, and Google will give you an, a guesstimate as to how many people are looking for a particular word or term. And it's fine in theory, but, and this is a massive but, if you have a business that targets a very niche product, so very often B2B technical products and services, Google probably doesn't have sufficient data to really give you meaningful guesstimates. Or if you target a very small geographic location, again, Google does not have sufficient data to give you anything meaningful, which means that for the vast majority of people advertising using Google Ads, 
I'm not convinced whether the ad planner, uh, the keyword planner, is of much benefit. Uh, we certainly don't pay much attention to the, the, the numbers it produces. We will look at it to see what words and phrases it, it suggests, but in terms of volumes, we give that scant uh, uh, attention. Similarly, with uh, Google's guesstimates as to how much you should be willing to pay to get in the game. I mean, we have numerous cases where uh, we have in big red writing next to various uh, keywords, uh, bid too low to appear on the first page, won't be displayed. I don't care. It's appearing in the first position. It's being clicked on our clients getting business. As you say, Google sometimes doesn't tell you quite the truth. Uh, if it was in a much bigger aggregated, you know, uh, consolidated um, auction, maybe. But when you're working in niches, the, the, the big data doesn't really extrapolate very well, in my experience. So again, this may sound a bit uh, cavalier, but we don't pay really any attention to the uh, what Google suggests is a minimum uh, price. And conversely, we had one client and uh, there to get the adverts to, you know, the, the, the recommendation was £1.65 or, or something like that. But to get the adverts to even be displayed, we had to pay £75 per click. So again, the information that Google was giving us was completely and utterly misleading. So again, when we ignore such information, we don't do so just because we know better or because we can't be bothered. It's just because we know that it's not sufficiently reliable to, to justify sweating over. Okay, so this is interesting because it feels to me like the, the foundation of digital marketing was always the data. And it feels to me like the data is going away. Like, like literally with um, Facebook and Apple and what's going on there, where they are giving, Apple are giving their customers the opportunity not to provide Facebook with that data. And also with the realization that the data that's provided probably isn't as accurate or useful as we used to think it was. Like Google have just faced a, uh, uh, no, not Google, Facebook have just um, lost a, um, what's it called? A case, a multiple party case or something. Class action. Class yes. action, yeah. For inflating the sizes of their audiences. That was from about yes. 2014. So it feels like, <clears throat> and I'm not in it, so it doesn't feel like it's going away from me. But it feels like, <clears throat> you know, this was the foundation of digital marketing. You could see what the opportunity looked like on the way in. You could have a sense of what you needed to invest to realize the opportunity. And you could then monitor it all the time you were involved. And it, because I'm hearing this not just from you, but from YouTube advertisers, from other PPC advertisers, you know, it feels like the data is much less or given much less credence than it used to be is that true i think deliberately or otherwise we are not being given arguably the same degree or accuracy or certainly access to data as we once uh, did if for those who are involved in uh, you know, search engine optimization, uh, which is, you know, where I cut my teeth. Uh, a long time ago, Google stopped showing you the, the actual words and phrases that uh, you were being uh, triggered for. And what I find, and, and you mentioned Facebook there, and with Facebook audiences, 
again, it's fine in theory, but in practice, as they are moving towards making better use of AI, big data, machine learning, uh, you need big data sets for that. Uh, you know, a million plus. And the historic way of working things in Facebook advertising was you would pick women of a certain age in a certain town who had dogs and you'd have an audience of 2,000 and you'd think that's fantastic because that's exactly the people I wish to speak to. But for privacy reasons uh, and also the fact that those same group would be just getting hammered because that's who everybody wanted to sell to dog owning women in that town wanted to, to advertise to. They were getting too much. So that's the reason I think why they've uh, made it more, you don't have such good, the, the audiences aren't as accurate. And with Google ads, uh, you can get a lot of data there if you know where and how to look. But even if you do know where and how to look, it's how you interpret that data. And you've always got to have a, a, a weather eye on where it is you wish to be. Because sometimes you can get beguiled by the fact that you're getting a, a, a large number of impressions, if that's what you want, or a large number of clicks, or a very good click-through rate, or whatever the, 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 the parameter is that you are measuring or wish to be measured by. But what I find with Google Ads is sometimes you can infer certain things, not by from what you can see, but from what you can't see. And this is going to sound very sort of pretentious and avant-garde, but seemingly, you know, the, you know, the Hubble telescope and astronomers and what have you can find galaxies and solar systems bazillions of light years away, not because they can see them, but because the way that light bends around other solar systems and stars, seemingly. It's a, it's a bit like that with Google Ads, but with, with less brains involved. But it's, it's the same idea. Sometimes you can discover that you are getting lots of impressions for something. And it's not really what you want to be found for. And that's why a thing we haven't mentioned, and I'm just going to drop it in here because it is important. Uh, something called negative keywords. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, that, that is imperative for success with Google Ads because everybody talks about what do you want to be found for? But there are so many what I call close but no cigar search terms that you pay for clicks, but they are not really what you want to be found for. So again, you can infer things and uh, you don't have to take the, you don't, you don't have to be spoon fed the, the data, but you are quite correct. It's, uh, it's not as simple or as transparent as it once was. Yeah, and it feels to me, yeah, I mean, it just does feel like maybe we respected it too much back in the day and we built these huge corporations on the back of it and um, maybe it wasn't as true as we thought it was. So we've, we've, we're speaking a lot, I think, about PPC. Um, is that the core of your business? Are you also involved in display advertising or shopping advertising or...? Okay, no, it's a very good point, and it, it's something that most people aren't really aware of. But these days, Google Ads covers a variety of advertising options. Google Ads, in its traditional sense, for want of a better term, uh, targets those people who are searching, using their voice with the keyboard for words and phrases. And the adverts appear at the top or and or possibly at the bottom of the search results. And that's where we spend most of our time. That's our main market. But Google Ads also does what they call display adverts, which are the you know, banner adverts and, and, and uh, things that appear all over, the, all over the web. 
on newspaper sites, on, on, on technical sites, on all sorts of sites. Uh, there's Google Shopping ads. If you have a, an online shop, uh, you can advertise on YouTube with video. Uh, uh, there are ones for apps. There's ones for hotels. Uh, they, they have a variety of, of different ones. Uh, and one that, uh, another aspect is what they call remarketing or, or retargeting ads, which are the ones that follow you around the internet like a bad smell. Now, I'm sure there must be a nicer way of putting it, but people know exactly what I mean. Uh, I can tell when my wife's been on my computer looking for hairspray because for the next week I get all of these adverts for hair products. Uh, not a good marketing spend, you know, it's, I'm never going to buy any of the stuff, but it, it, these things follow you around based on what you've looked at. And that can be a very cost effective uh, use of Google Ads. And you can do the same on Facebook and on LinkedIn and other platforms. But you can use Google Ads so that anybody who has visited your site, your website, regardless of how they got there, you can then follow up with them by displaying adverts all over the place for days, weeks, months to come. And it builds and maintains your brand awareness. And it may just catch them at the moment when they're ready to buy. Because you know yourself, you can be on a website, you can be very keen, enthusiastic, ready to do something. And the doorbell goes, or your meal's ready, or a client phones up, or the dog's sick, or you know something happens. Uh, and it breaks your train of thought, and you forget about it. And we're all guilty. So those remarketing adverts can be very potent. So we do get involved in all of those, but uh, our main bread and butter is and remains the, the Google search ads. When people are physically typing in, I'm looking for a holiday, a product, a service, whatever. That's uh, where most of our effort is spent these days. Yeah, I mean, remarketing is insanely good. Again, depending on how precise you want to be with it. I mean, if you are, people are, you know, generating sales because people got to the checkout page and didn't quite complete, like you say, the phone rings, the kid runs away, the whatever happens, yes. you know, so that's from uh, incredibly sharp sales, you know, marketing and sales again. Somebody showed me recently how effective display ads could be. In fact, they showed me that the display ads generated a lower cost of customer acquisition than their PPC campaigns. And I was blown away because I also have to teach display advertising. And that was a challenge for me as a digital marketer. I was like, why would you do vague display advertising when you can be buying customers through PPC? Mm -hmm. um, because the, the, the click rates are so low, but I'd never actually thought about what the value of that click might be once you get it. And this guy was demonstrating that that click was every bit as valuable as the clicks they were achieving through their PPC campaigns. And I think especially now Facebook is going away, like all of the things that you knew by targeting through Facebook, you can now know um, targeting through display ads. So I think it's going to be interesting times. I think there's it, it, some changes I mean, coming. Definitely. I mean, the, the, the reality is this is another example of it's, it's horses for courses. And um, I often refer to the iPhone as a good example. The day before the iPhone was launched, what, 12, I don't know how many years ago now, 14, 15 years ago, nobody was searching on Google or anywhere else for, I'm looking for a bit of glass that I can have in my calendar, email, internet, and make phone calls on. It just didn't exist. Nobody knew to search for it. So you could have had a fantastic uh, Google ad search advert running for smartphone, but nobody would be looking for it. But maybe a display advert, you know, that would have got people's attention. Uh, and so it can be with maybe new products. Uh, it can also come down to how much budget you have, uh, how well you can describe your audience. 
because just as within Facebook, as you mentioned, you can define audiences, you can do something similar with uh, within Google. Uh, it's probably not as defined, but again, it's big numbers. Uh, and if you can get it to work, then why not? It's it ultimately again it comes down to what is the return on the investment. Yeah. So anything you do, be it Google Ads, be it Google Display Ads, be it Facebook Ads, be it uh, you know a biplane flying with a tail banner, you've got to measure what it's cost, what the return was, and how long it took to get that return to see whether it was worth pursuing and whether it's worth increasing or whether you should stop. So I, so I, never, I, I very seldom say to somebody, don't do that uh, without knowing some facts. You know, it's, uh... Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think, um, I, think there's gonna, I think there's changes afoot. I think you know, things are coming around again. And I think like the targeting, like the display targeting, the demographic targeting, isn't so very different from what you were doing on Facebook. You know, it's mm. like Google, Facebook knows what you're doing when you're on Facebook. Google knows what do, what you're mm. doing when you're on the planet. You know, it, it's, it knows absolutely everything about you. It's reading your emails. You know, they know absolutely everything about you. Um, and, and that's, and just very briefly, if I may, that's one of the reasons why they, they're, they're what they've got, they call smart campaigns. And, and they, they've come up with variations on that whereby you give Google pretty, very little information actually, and you give it a budget and it uses its artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning, what have you. And it basically will make up a mixture of adverts for you to, to display on Gmail, YouTube, the search results, you name it. It, 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 it tries lots of things, which uh, is very beguiling, very compelling um i've had i've heard mixed results uh back very often you know people are expecting too much with too small a budget yeah but it's uh I, i'm just flagging up because it's something that people will have doubtless heard about and may wonder what it what it is in the overall scheme of things but it does try to address the fact that google knows a lot and tries to work it out on your behalf with the caveat that you've raised previously that uh, it may have a vested interest. Yeah, you see, this is my issue with, with AI is now we don't trust Google already and now they're just compounding and, um, you know, um, encoding those, those biases, I think. I don't know. We only have seven minutes left of the time oh. that you committed to speak to me. Um, so I'm not in any rush necessarily, but I don't want to take more of your time than, than you've committed to where we are with the questions. I think I'm happy to say you are clearly qualified to talk to us about, um, uh, Google ads. Um, I think, have we got a sense of who you work with and how you add value to their lives? Are there customers where this is particularly useful? It's... We find that um, by having an initial conversation with somebody who is either contemplating Google Ads or from a purely selfish point of view, we find that those who have been using Google Ads but not getting the results, having a conversation with them with no commitment just to find out whether it's uh, uh, you know, uh, worth pursuing is a very good starting point and uh, it can help uh, that client or potential client decide whether they should stop doing what they're doing, which is a very valid uh, outcome if that's appropriate, through to reinforcing the fact and confirming that what they're doing is as good as it's going to get. Because we wouldn't take on a client if we didn't think we could make a substantial positive difference. But in the most optimistic side of things, if we can identify clear areas of improvement, things that we know will deliver positive outcomes, then that's a good uh, result for both us and the client. Because what we find is most of our clients tend to stay with us 
on an ongoing basis. Excellent. Uh, because it's mutually beneficial. So, uh, but basically, if, if somebody's struggling with Google Ads at the moment, uh, but they feel it should be working, there's no harm for them in them getting in touch. We can have a, an initial chat, see where it takes them, and we can progress from there. Okay. So, question number three. I mean, that's that's it. I think you can you can pretty much see from a campaign where the efficiencies are do you know what i mean or yeah. if there are efficiencies to be gained exactly yes and and we're brutally honest because there's nothing to be gained from us saying to somebody give us your money and after a couple of months they say you're as bad as the last lot you know yeah. that's not the reputation that we want we've spent 20 years being the good guys uh there's no value in us taking a, a one-off short-term uh, game like that. We're in yeah. this for a mutually beneficial arrangement uh, that suits everybody. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Really glad to hear that. So my recommendation for anyone who wants to do better with their AdWords is to call you. What do you think? I couldn't possibly comment, but I, what I would say is anybody who is contemplating Google Ads, forget about Google Ads and how it works. Think about your business, your market, and what it is you want to achieve. The three things that you as the business owner or the person in charge of marketing for that business should know. Uh, because that then means that when you speak to me or anyone else for that matter, you have points of reference that you can compare whatever you're being told against what you require, commercially what you require. So Good. that if somebody says, oh, we can get you lots of clicks, you can say, so what? I don't want clicks, I want phone calls or I want forms filled in or I want people to buy things. So by concentrating on the fundamental business basics, before you get embroiled in all the mumbo jumbo about online marketing and Google ads, uh, it stops you getting confused, misled and disappointed. And it sounds to me like the one thing they're definitely going to get from a com conversation with you is a pessimistic sense of the viability of what they're trying to achieve rather than an overly optimistic sense of the viability. It's, it's important to find a niche. And most people selling Google Ads or most online marketing, everything's rosy, everything's wonderful, right up until the point it isn't, by which time you spent your money and you've, you've, you've lost your enthusiasm. We take a much more realistic view based on the fact that we've been doing this a long while, we've been getting results consistently for forever and there's nothing in it for us to to blow that no good i like that i really like that a lot okay good so that brings us to question number four which is what do you recommend people read and i know you're ready for this because you went and got the book before yes we started speaking. well actually th this is a book that uh people may be familiar with directly or indirectly it's got nothing to do with google ads uh, but it's called Building a, Bra a, a Story Brand by a chap called Donald Miller. Okay. And it it's, applies to all aspects of marketing. And the, the, the ethos behind it is that you try and encase everything within a story. And rather than, as we see on so many websites where, you know, we were set up in 2002 and we did this and we're fantastic and we're great and you should use us and the normal spiel. It should be, all be about the client or the potential client. Yes. And it should address their pain points, their, their issues. And our role is to act as a guide, to, to take them through the story so that they can get to the conclusion that they want we're just there to facilitate it. And it's, uh, it's something that we've all watched films, we've all read books, 
uh, storytelling's gone way back to caveman days. It's something that we all respond well to, much better than the copy on most websites, which is all corporate guff and has no bearing whatsoever to what the person reading it actually wants to know, which is basically, I have a problem, how do I fix it? And can you fix it? Yeah, yeah. So building a story brand, Donald Miller, that definitely worth reading or, you know, it's got online resources as well. Fantastic. That sounds, I don't know why people still do that. They do that and salespeople do that. They turn up and they start talking about themselves. It's like the least interesting thing. I always think the copy should be, if you are this kind of a person and you are in this kind of a situation and you are facing these kinds of challenges and you have these kinds of options, then do you know what I mean? It should be you, you, yes. you, but um, it very rarely is. That sounds like a great recommendation. Thank you for that. Good. So the final um, piece of business that we need to cover is who are you going to throw under the bus, Kenneth? Who do you, who can you... Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure he'll be up for this. I, I have asked his permission, but uh, he was out of office. Uh, but a chap called Mark Saxby, uh, and he works for a firm called Status Social. Status Social. So, again, uh, this is not Google Ads related, but he has a very... I, I've known him for you know, quite a while now. And he has a very similar ethos to I, which uh, obviously makes him a great guy. Uh, but uh, joking apart, he, he, it's, uh, he's involved in a different area of online marketing, has a, a similar focus on what's in it for the, the client. And, and like us, he's got clients across the globe. So I think it should be a, a good fit for you. So. Uh, hopefully tomorrow he will have confirmed that it's okay for me to have given you his details <laughs> and uh, I, sh I shall pass those on to you. Okay, absolutely fantastic. So if like in the way that Warren did with us, if you might be able to put together like a LinkedIn kind of introduction, that seems to be working really quite well. Excellent. Is there just one person that you're going to pull into my trap? I think uh, he'd be a good starter. Uh, you, you, you don't want to be indoctrinated by people who are all uh, like me. But uh, <laughs> I, I would imagine that the, the approach that you're taking does keep things fresh uh, in terms of not only people, but in topics. Yes. Uh, and I'm sure that your audience will appreciate that because, you know, an hour, hour 15 minutes, however long we've been speaking, is, is quite a, a big time commitment. So you want people to get value out of it. A hundred percent, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and the nice thing is, is because it's all happening by referral, I've got no idea where it's going. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm speaking to people like across all of the different platforms, but also people with different values, you know. So I've been speaking mm -hmm. to people who are very interested in sustainability and how you have sustainable marketing and... And I've got into a whole thing in Australia because somebody referred to me to somebody in Australia. And so, yeah, it's really nice. It's going, it's not going where I want it to go. It's going where it's going. It's really nice. Man, and, thank and that, I think, and I think that's a very important thing when it comes to Google Ads. You know, you may have an idea of where you want to go, but you have to roll with the punches. You know, you can't yes. just, uh, you, you've got to be proactive and reactive. 100%. And this is why I say to people, it's like, teaching people to surf you know it's a very dynamic situation it's like you know the best i think i can do if i'm teaching people is just give them the enthusiasm and the confidence mm -hmm. to go out and do it so that they you know so that they they can have some fun with it i think exactly but Kenneth, uh, so so well done you for sort of your mission and uh, good luck with it thank you very much thank you so much for your time today man i do really appreciate it and um, I will let you know when it goes up. I'll send you an email. You can give it a like and a share and a comment and all those things. Shall That's do. good. It will be about a month's time because I've got about eight of these already recorded. So they're going out two a week. So it will be in about a month's time. But I will let you know when that's happening.
that's actually it works out rather well for me as well because uh, uh, something you mentioned earlier that we're in the throes of redigging our own marketing dramatically uh, so by that time we should have something uh, more attuned to what we've been talking about for people to see if they if they follow it through so uh, great fantastic and they will find your website at initiative figure two dot com dot com okay fantastic indeed uh, and they'll find me on linkedin as well i'm very i'm very active on linkedin excellent and you are kenneth mckay man thank you so much for your time today i've thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this and i'm sure if people commit the time to listen to this then they will also take away something of real value i would certainly hope so but i appreciate your time appreciate the chance and uh, as long as one person gets one nugget that saves them a lot of pain or just gets them results then it's been a worthwhile exercise fantastic i also think that excellent okay so we'll say goodbye now for the audience and then what will happen is i'll stop the recording and we'll say goodbye like normal human beings <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time man you're welcome cheers 